My name is Jeffrey Kahn, and you're listening to a podcast from digitaloilandgas.com. This podcast is entitled, The Digitalization of Oil and Gas for Plausible Scenarios. Many in the oil and gas industry are wrestling with how their sector will shape up over the long term. But how can scenario planning provide some insight for boards and management? We live in a world of considerable volatility and complexity, and the news feed about the global oil and gas sector has been relentlessly grim for at least the last uh, three years. So it's useful to hold some ideas of possible future scenarios so that you can make some choices today that could play out over the long term. One technique that helps give some shape to futures is to consider what trend lines are unfolding that are looking really hard to stop. That is, there's enough solid fact base to suggest that they'll continue. And what are the big uncertainties that no one really has an answer for? Map these out and see what it tells you. There are many trends worth considering in oil and gas, but here are six that to me seem absolutely unstoppable. First is demographics. Demographics favors the East. There's no disputing the rise of Asian and African economies for the next several decades, driven by their big base populations, higher birth rates, and overall youthful age shape. Consumers there will want more of the stuff that uses energy, cars, transportation, household appliances, and industry. And as these economies enable more of their populations into the middle class, gravity is pulling all of everything to the east. And next is technology. Technology is everywhere. Technology innovation is unlocking new fuel sources like shale, helping capture greenhouse gases or GHGs for safe disposal, improving energy efficiency, lowering the cost of renewables and transforming the transportation industry, education and farming sectors. Ideas from technology move around the planet in ever faster cycles. Faster, smaller, smarter, networked and everywhere. Everything on, online, all the time, more efficient and smarter. And then there's the climate. Climate change is and will continue to be a big concern. Skeptics notwithstanding, science consensus is that the planet is warming up because of greenhouse gases. While the long-run planetary temperature effects are uncertain, what is predictable is that society will generally support ongoing steps to slow, stop, and reverse climate effects. Developed economies are well advanced in this regard, with new carbon taxes, fuel consumption taxes, fuel efficiency targets, renewable energy adoption, and grid transformation. But the big economies of India and China are not far behind. Most nations have signed on to the Paris Climate Accord to try to limit the rise in the planet's temperature. Another big trend line relates to energy. The world appears to be at the point of a new era in energy. Digital advances change the traditional roles of industry players in the power sector. A consumer with solar panels on their home becomes an energy producer. The flow of electrons becomes bi-directional rather than just one way. Energy producing and consuming devices will communicate with each other rather than through a grid operator. Appliances and machines will soon be able to respond to price signals and shift load to times of excess power capacity. Renewables look to provide more and more of energy supply as their costs continue to fall. Batteries and natural gas power plants will backstop the intermittency inherent in the renewable energy supply. Next big trend line is transportation. Transportation, as a big consumer of energy, is also shifting. Drivetrains will become electric, slowly at first, but will pick up pace. After all, it's taken 20 years for the first million electric cars to hit the road, but only 12 months for the second million. The top six big automakers who account for 50% of all cars and truck production have all announced plans to electrify their vehicles in the next five to 10 years. Tesla has announced its new entry into the heavy truck sector and crews and container shipping are embracing liquefied natural gas as a fuel. Less visible, but with just as significant an impact, is the addition of technologies that create connected, autonomous, shared, and energy-efficient vehicles. And the last big trend I want to point to is uh, the great uh, shale gale that's blowing throughout North America. It's turning the global order of things upside down. North America is soon to be fully self-sufficient in oil, which will cause trading patterns in oil to change. Digital innovation will shift the recoveries from shale to match those of conventional, unlocking yet more hydrocarbons. America may not ever ship that much of its energy wealth, but the effect of removing 9 million barrels of oil demand from daily markets means that product has to find other places of consumption. 
So there's the big trend lines. So let's surface some critical uncertainties. Life is uncertain. So let's just take a look at two, the directions of the global economy and its energy dimension and the government's digital policy agenda. Consider first the global economic performance that we're all on. Growing economies consume ever greater quantities of energy to drive growth, whereas unstable environments cause price inflation and supply pressures. So will we see a return to the stable geopolitical environment of the past 15 years with its strong globalization flavor? Or will we see the continued chronic and increasingly confrontational stagnation that has plagued much of Europe since 2008? Will there be more geopolitical conflicts, such as between ISIS and the Middle East, the Ukraine and Russia, Qatar and the other Gulf states, China and the other nations in the South China Sea? Will unrest return to key oil and gas exporting nations? Arab Spring Round 2? Will governments make needed changes to their national energy policies to eliminate distortions in pricing, investments, and infrastructure? And what about Brexit? Will Brexit trigger other grumpy segments in the Europe experiment to seek an exit? Will the southern Eurozone countries adopt some of the industrial policies of the North? And will the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which has taken ages to develop, survive government changes in Canada and the U.S.? Will NAFTA collapse under pressure from nationalist governments with little economic sense, but strong political support? Now let's take a look at the government digital policy agenda. Governments are, in general, behind in addressing these digital shifts. We see this play out in markets where Uber and Airbnb attempt entry into new markets and run headlong into politicians, regulations, and institutions that favor the incumbents. Data is the lifeblood of digital. But will policymakers lighten restrictive privacy and national governance rules around data to enable innovation? Will transborder data rules be relaxed to allow innovative solutions in artificial intelligence and machine learning to transform whole sectors of economic life? Will governments permit the rapid adoption of technologies that threaten current jobs, but hold out the promise of different future jobs? And will education systems that are tied to perpetuating skills in the industrial age embrace the curriculums of tomorrow to create future employables? And will regulatory systems that assume human operators of equipment in aircraft, trucking, shipping, and rail be modified to allow for more robots, even as these threaten jobs and, in the interim, community safety? And will tax and tariff schemes, based on income from the sale of traditional fuels, adapt to the rise of alternative, untaxed energy sources? Will governments tax sunshine? Will governments change institutions so as to recognize cryptocurrencies as legal tender and smart contracts as legally enforceable? And will courts recognize robots or their inventors as criminally liable should an accident between a robot and a human take a life? Or will cyber attacks, identity theft, and criminal activity aided by cyber paralyze governments into inaction? Some nation states like Singapore, Dubai, and Estonia have embraced digital change, but will the others? Now, if we map out stagnation versus globalization against a digital versus analog world, we get four rather intriguing future scenarios for oil. The first is the Jetsons. This is where we map globalization and a strong government-based digital policies. With the world on a global growth agenda and the rapid adoption of digital technologies, the demand for energy would continue to grow unabated. Digitalization of the economy facilitates renewables and electrification, which are the most amenable to digital enhancement. And digital, enabled by eager governments, rapidly transforms significant segments of the global economy, unlocking new business models, accelerating trade, and unleashing global demand. Oil will lose ground to electrons, of course, but the application of digital technology to oil accelerates, particularly in shale resources that have low recovery rates. I call this scenario the Jetsons. Now, what if we map a strong globalization agenda, but with a much more reduced government policy position on digital. While with the world on a global growth agenda, but with governments resistant to adapt to digital change, digital transformation of energy demand centers such as agriculture, manufacturing, and transportation falter. Oil and gas companies apply digital thinking inside the fence, and demand for oil rem remains robust in our analog 1990s business models. Traditional fuels maintain their dominance as institutions, tax policies, and regulations block digital efforts. 
and the climate suffers as population growth adopts the energy-intense lifestyle of the West. Now, what if we mapped stagnation with a reduced emphasis by governments on digital? This low global growth world and that would favor established energy sources like oil, particularly from low-cost producers with large established resource bases, such as OPEC, to the detriment of non-conventional sources like shale and oil sands. With taxes under pressure, rising unemployment, little funding available for innovation, and carbon still on the agenda, governments would hunker down. Restrictive rules on digital accelerate the rise of China, whose government system is more directive. A few early adopters of digital look like winners, but jobs at home count for more. Pizza will still be home delivered by a pimply teen on a moped. And the final scenario is one with global stagnation, but with high digital adoption. I call this scenario Blade Runner. Low global growth and a resulting low demand for energy in a highly digital world leads to job scarcity and unemployment cramps pay packets and government revenues. Governments have no option but to play along with cryptocurrencies, autonomous trucking, and robo-farms, or risk being globally uncompetitive. Wealth shifts to the innovators in digital. Fossil fuels face an uncertain future, with digital running rampant, destroying oil demand while unlocking yet more reserves. Renewables increasingly behave like digital and continue to eat the digital world. Well, there you have it, four interesting scenarios. There's no correct one, of course. There are just many possible futures, as there are many trend lines that even this discussion hasn't considered. But the trend lines I've let, uh, set out do not show any signs of abating, so a thoughtful response is to watch how the uncertainties play out and to manage accordingly. You have been listening to a podcast from digitaloilgas.com. If you like what you've heard, please subscribe to future installments and visit us at digitaloilgas.com.